Yes, good morning, Judge Barris. Um, um, my um, entire professional career, I have been involved in situations of supporting victims. Um, as a judge, um, as an advocate, um, as an advocate for women's rights and for people's rights. And I have seen in my courtroom so many victims over the years, time and time and time and time again. And to be on this side of this, is very difficult. And it is important for the defendant and for everyone present to understand the horrific effect that this has had on me. I am a strong woman. I pride myself on being extremely strong and extremely disciplined. But this has cut me to the core. Um, you know, again, I've been so involved in so many things. I purposely chose to go to a women's college undergraduate. Um, I have been on the forefront personally. I have been advocating for women who are pregnant because my own daughter-in-law died needlessly. And so every situation in my life and juncture in my life, I have seen myself as really being on the forefront particularly now with the maternal rates of death in this country and having lost my own daughter-in-law, who I always referred to as my daughter, of women dying needlessly. And so to have been in where I thought was a safe space, Judge Bowers that evening, as a guest of who is now Marshall Brown, but a retired sheriff at the time, and I had been welcomed in that setting all evening, all evening. People were gracious, they were welcoming, they were people taking pictures. I mean, just such a wonderful environment. And for this man to come up and violate me the way that he did is unspeakable. I thought I was okay. I went home. I even went to a dinner the next night. This happened on a Tuesday. And Thursday morning, I could not get out of bed. I could not. And I have been through so many trying times, both professionally and personally, that have not affected me in the way that this has. And this is the first time in my life, in my adult life, that I felt that I was completely powerless. And that is a horrible, horrible way to feel. I, and I pride myself on being extremely strong. I see myself as a very strong woman. And I have been blessed with a number of opportunities in my life. I have said and will continue to say that I um, unapologetically went immediately into therapy. I was talking to my therapist as late as last night in preparing for what would come today. This is the first time I've seen a defendant since that night. There was clearly no remorse. It, I was stunned. I was angry at myself that I didn't hit him, but I was just paralyzed. I was in shock. And I so now understand the victims that I have heard who've said that. I know what that feels like personally now. I know what that feels like. And I hope that the defendant understands that that is a situation that will stay with me forever. That instant, in so many ways, changed my life. 
And I, um, it is important that people who do these kinds of things understand the impact that it has. Because if I, with degrees and with all the professional opportunities I've had and with all the things I have done in this world, for me to stand here in this courtroom affected the way I am, what about all the other women who don't have the resources that I have, who don't have the support of a former sheriff, now U.S. Marshal Brown, of loving friends, of people who have really put their arms around me? What happens with all the other women who don't have the courage to say this is wrong and that this should not happen ever? It is a disgrace. It is horrific. And the impact it has is a deep scar. If you had told me that I would be here and reacting the way that I am, I would not have believed it. Again, I think that I'm a very strong woman. And if this has happened to me, and I have the resources to have counseling, I have the support of a wonderful community, what about the women who don't, Judge? And that's the point. It is not lost on me that that night, although there had been one other black woman that the reception and she had left by that time, it is not lost on me. I was the only black woman in that entire room. He did not know me. He was not invited to the table. He came to the end of that table and stood next to me. Marshall Brown introduced himself as a retired sheriff, introduced me as Judge Hatchett. And yet, he did what he did to me, which is horrific and is I thank the court for the time. I thank the court for the opportunity to speak. And I know that I stand here in so many ways, not just for myself, but for a lot of women who have been abused, who don't get to have the opportunity of this forum that I've had this morning. So I thank you, Your Honor. You know, in April, can I respond? Ms. Hatchett, Ms. Dutch Hatchett, may I, may I respond? Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't hear you. I, I want to relate something to you that in no way is, 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 um, it, it's meant to equate with what you just told me, but it helps me to understand what you're telling me. In April 2016, I had a really horrible accident on property I was in North East Georgia. I almost lost my life. So Prior to that, I never understood really the concept of pain and suffering. I had hurts in my life, but I didn't understand in, in my marrow, the marrow of my soul, what pain and suffering was. I understand today because every day my leg hurts, it bothers me, it's painful. It, I'll carry that with me to my grave. I am not equating how you feel with how I feel. I understand. In that. any way at all. I understand. But I simply relate that to you so that I can, as best I know with my limited intelligence, to, to say to you, I. I, I grieve for you. I am sorry that you have suffered this um, in the community in which I live and, and uh, honored to serve. I respect the fact that you, come, that you have come here today and um, have said what you have said. The state has suggested to
do with the platform and the resources that you've indicated that you possess to be even more vocal in speaking out for women. You can be their voice and you can be their face. You can be their advocate in many, many ways. And I would simply say respectfully to you men, to you Judge Hatchett, to do that and to step into that void where others cannot. And perhaps you can make an even bigger difference than you already have. And I thank you for your time this morning. I appreciate the fact that you're here very much. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Thank you, I, I appreciate that. Um, if I may just respond to one thing that you said about sure. the delay. Sure, you may respond to anything. Have, um, having been on the other side of this and sit where you sit, I understand the demands on the court. And I, just, I understand the demands on the schedule of this court, compounded by COVID. But from my perspective, I must tell you that I think that there has been an abuse of the process by the defendant and his attorney in a way that kept delaying. This case was scheduled, Your Honor, to be pled out the second week in September. And there were just delays after delays after delays. I think, I'll be very candid, I think for the purposes of preserving his pension. And I think that that is just despicable. I think he, they have manipulated this system to his advantage, and I think that that is unacceptable. I say that as an officer of the court, and I say it as a victim. And in closing, I just want to say thank you for sharing your story. Um, I, too, did not understand the pain of grief until my father died suddenly almost 30 years ago. And it changed my perspective about dealing with people and loss in my own courtroom as people came in and, and were suffering. I understood the pain differently after you had had that kind of pain. I purposely did not speak about this issue. I didn't want to do anything to jeopardize the, the uh, sanctity of your court and this process, but I will absolutely be vocal. If it had to happen to somebody, it's best that it happened to me because I am in a position to then help others. And I thank the court for the, your time this morning and I thank you for sharing your story with me. Very much appreciate that. I would prefer we met under different circumstances. I do too. I'm, I'm uh, honored that you've been here today. I appreciate that. Thank you very much, Your Honor.